the representatives of the representatives of the Medel member associations, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to conclude these formal greetings um, with a special reference um, because of its symbolism given the subject of this conference. We have among us uh, in this uh, room Yavuz Yadin, Yadin, a Turkish judge who was unlawfully dismissed following the purge carried out by the authorities of that country and was forced into exile. In his person, I wish to salute all Turkish magistrates, lawyers and jurists. Uh, namely the members of Yarsaf, the Turkish Judges Association, which is a member of Medel, who were dismissed and had been persecuted, many of them forced into exile in precarious conditions. Um, I, I recall uh, Murat Arzlan, President of Yarsaf, uh, to whom the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe awarded in 2017 Vlaklava Vell Human Rights Prize, um, who uh, has been uh, in detention since uh, 26 October 2016, serving a 10-year prison sentence to which he was sentenced after a trial that did not meet any of the internationally recognized minimum standards of a due process. Uh, dear Yavuz, um, with this uh, greeting, I reaffirm the um, Medel's unwavering commitment to all those in Turkey and beyond uh, who continue to fight for the return of the rule of law to your country. <coughs> On behalf of Medel, I'd like to express my gratitude to our Portuguese Association, the Association of Portuguese Judges, and the Portuguese Union of Public Prosecutors for accepting the challenge of organizing this conference. Um, to the Catholic University, on behalf uh, of uh, the Rector, Professor Isabel Caplogil and Professor Paul Pintal Kerke, I'd like to express my gratitude for the enthusiastic way in which, from the very first moment, they welcomed the idea of this initiative and did everything possible for it to become a reality, highlighting the work of the whole team that collaborated in the organization led by Philip. Uh, allow me also to um, uh, uh, to you personally thank you, Commissioner Didier Rendiers, for the willingness you have always shown to participate in this conference. Um, a testimony of your recognition of the importance of the topic we will be discussing here and of your commitment to defend the rule of law in Europe. Um, and I actually dare to say that we will discuss uh, along these two days of this conference this topic uh, that will most shape the future of European Union in coming decades. In recent years, we have witnessed in several states an attack on the most basic principles that comprise the common foundations on which the Union, EU, has been built. Um, the rule of law, independence of the judiciary, protection of minority rights, and freedom of press and freedom of expression. Basic concepts such as the premise of union law, which uh, were thought to be solidly accepted, have been called into question, endangering the whole complex in the face that has been built over the years, and that has managed to make the EU the most successful project of integration of sovereign nations that history has ever seen. It is on this reality that we will reflect over these two days, trying to answer three questions. How did we get here? Where do we stand at this moment? And what must we do to get out of the situation? L let us be very clear. We are not going to talk only of Poland and Hungary. At this conference, we could talk about Spain, where the renewal of the Superior Council has been blocked for over a thousand days due to a lack of political dialogue. We could talk about France or Germany, where there is no structure to guarantee the real independence of the Public Prosecutor's Office. We could talk about Romania, where the fight against corruption in the judiciary has led to solutions that the CJEU says may be contrary to the EU law. And we could also very well talk about Portugal, where contrary to all internationally established standards, judges do not represent at least half of the members of the High Council and where on the High Councils, non registered members may still be politicians or practicing lawyers and therefore may represent parties in legal proceedings and participate in a body that manages careers and punishes magistrates who handle those same proceedings. But we also have to make it very clear, if we're not only going to talk about Poland and Hungary, we will be essentially be talking about Poland and Hungary because uh, uh, while there may be structural problems in all members, never before have we seen in these two an organized and deliberate campaign to destroy the independence of the judiciary and, and subject it to the control of the executive branch. Um, what we have been witnessing both is the implementation of a public strategy of uh, uh, destruction of democracy from within gradually and effectively using its own instruments. Um, only one of the most important steps of that strategy being the capture of the judiciary. Nobody would have imagined a little over 10 years ago that today two of the member states of the EU would not be considered functional democracies. 
The defense of the common values of democracy and the rule of law is not, however, carried out only at the level of the EU institutions. That is why I'll also look at what is happening at the level of the Council of Europe and the challenges it faces. Um, the European Court of Human Rights, one of the institutions that has most contributed uh, towards the sedimentation of a true culture of respect for human rights on the European continent has been faced with new challenges in recent years. Um, faced with situations of total breakdown of the rule of law in the member states of the Council of Europe, um, the um, ECTHR has found it difficult to adapt and find ad uh, adequate and timely responses to these situations. Uh, as we wrote in a collective article uh, published on the occasion of Euro Europe Day in May this year, it is at times like these that a court like the European um, uh, Court of Human Rights is needed more than ever, and perhaps maybe the time has come to reflect on what needs to be done for this uh, uh, court to preserve its authority, to reduce the excessive length and that. Um, time of proceedings, seriously reconsider the criteria for assessing existence of an effective domestic remedy or the requirements uh, uh, for issuing interim measures, rethink its funding model, freeing it from the threat of budget cuts resulting from unilateral decisions by member states, dissatisfied with the judgments um, or reformulate the selection processes for its judges, taking the choice out of the hands of governments. Your Excellency, European Commissioner. Less than two years have uh, gone by since in January 2020 you received uh, in Brussels uh, a medal delegation chaired by me and we told you of our concerns about the situation of the ju judiciary in several member states. Uh, never before, like in these almost two years, have the principles underpinning the rule of law been so tested. Um, but also, never before has uh, there been such a large and united reaction by European magistrates in defense of this common heritage. Um, it is. Uh, uh, symbolic uh, that we are holding this uh, conference in Lisbon, where uh, the Portuguese Judges Association has its headquarters, an organization that brought the case before the Court of Justice of the EU, enabling it to state unequivocally for the first time that respect for the independence of the, ju the judiciary is, is a simple basic principle of EU, EU law that must be respected by all states. On the 11th of January 2020, judges from over 22 European states are gathered in Poland and marched side by side through the streets of Warsaw, demanding respect for the separation of powers and the rule of law. Magistrates from countries with different uh, judicial traditions and systems stated with only one voice unequivocally that we are all first and foremost European magistrates. The thousands of citizens who throughout uh, Warsaw followed the demonstration shouted one word, constitution. Um, deep down at heart, they all of them, magistrates and citizens, spoke only one language, the language of the rule of law. That is the only language that can uh, truly unite the whole of Europe. Um, this conference um, is but a continuation of uh, that January 2020 March. Um, it's another step on the road that everyone, judges, prosecutors, lawyers, and academics, um, uh, wanted to travel towards uh, full respect of the rule of law and a truly united Europe um, on behalf of Medel and uh, with warm thanks to all speakers who agreed to share their knowledge with us. Um, I wish you all a good conference and good work. Um.